Good afternoon or evening or morning, depending on where in the world you are. My name is Sandy Kane. I'm the CEO of Real Sourcing Network, and I want to welcome you to our webinar on why direct mail still matters. We're really glad to have all of you with us today. Before we get started, I want to cover a couple of housekeeping items if I can. First, we'd love to get questions from you during the webinar. You can submit your questions by clicking on the question mark icon that's on your screen and following the instructions. We'll have time either during or at the end of the presentation to respond to your questions. Second, we're recording this webinar, so we'll be sending you a link to the recording within the next few days, so you don't really need to take any detailed notes about what we discuss. As I said, my name is Sandy Kane. I'm the guy on the left, and I'm the CEO of Real Sourcing Network. We provide an e-sourcing software solution for printed materials and a wide range of other marketing services, including direct mail. Many of our clients use direct mail in a variety of forms for a wide range of purposes. So today's topic is a very important one for us and our clients. We're also delighted to have with us today, Gary Reblin, the guy on the right. Gary is the Vice President of New Products and Innovation at the US Postal Service. Over the last few years, the Postal Service has introduced several new services that have made it easier to incorporate direct mail into modern multi-channel marketing programs. And Gary will be sharing some great information about these innovations. Gary, I want to thank you very much for joining us today. And I'll ask Gary to introduce himself in a little more detail when we get to his part of the presentation. We're going to be covering four main points today during our discussion. First, I'm going to be reviewing some recent trends in the popularity and use of direct mail. Specifically, I'm going to talk about recent trends in spending, the volume of direct mail, and changes in the response rates rates that are produced by direct mail. These data points will show pretty clearly that direct mail is still a very effective marketing tool. Second, advocates of direct mail have been arguing for a long time that there is something, spe there is something special about direct mail and other physical marketing materials that make them more appealing and persuasive than digital marketing communications. But for a long time, proponents of digital marketing tend to poo-poo these arguments. Over the past decade or so, however, several neuroscience researchers have looked at this appeal and the impact of physical media versus digital media, and I'll share the results of a couple of these studies. Third, we're going to share some data that shows that direct mail is still appealing to younger consumers, even though conventional wisdom has shown that young people are digital natives who want to do everything online. And then finally, Gary is going to talk about what the US Postal Service is doing to further enhance the ability and effectiveness of direct mail. So let's get started. Quote from Mark Twain that uh, he said uh, back in 1897 when he was in London on a speaking tour, the rumors were going around that he was either gravely ill or had died. And one major American newspaper actually printed his obituary. When a reporter asked him for his response to these rumors, Twain replied, the report of my death was an exaggeration. Well, a lot of marketing pundits have been predicting the death of direct mail for more than two decades. These pundits usually point to the explosive growth of digital marketing and argue that most forms of dead tree marketing have become obsolete relics of the past. But to paraphrase Twain, reports of the death of direct mail are a great exaggeration. The reality is, and we're going to show you, it hasn't died. And in fact, in some ways, it's experiencing a renaissance. To prove that point, we only need to look at a few statistics regarding recent trends in the use and performance of direct mail. So let's start with direct mail spending. This chart shows us that spending on direct mail marketing in the US has been relatively stable over the past five years, despite all the talk about direct mail dying. We don't have data yet for this year, but the Winterberry Group, who put this data that's on the chart together, 
has estimated that spending on direct mail marketing this year will be up by 3.3%. And if that proves to be accurate, it means that spending on direct mail will be about $44 billion this year, which would bring direct mail spending back to the level it was in 2015. I wouldn't call that a major decline. I should mention that you're going to see a chart on spending that Gary will show that has numbers that are significantly lower than the ones you see here. And that's because this chart shows direct mail total spend, including the printing while Gary will be showing only the, the Postal Service revenue along those lines. If you look at volumes, you see a similar story. It's true that the overall volume of direct mail has declined slightly over these past five years, as the chart shows. If you do the math, however, the decline during this period has been about 4.7% over a five-year period, which again, isn't really consistent with the idea that direct mail is disappearing from the marketing mix. What is happening is that marketers are making their direct mail campaigns more targeted and even personalized on a one-to-one -one basis while reducing overall direct mail volume. So for example, rather than sending the same generic mail piece to 5,000 customers or prospects, a marketer might send out four versions of the mail piece that are set, that are individualized to various segments of about a thousand each, so that you'd see a slight decrease in the volume, but a more targeted um, you know, message to the audience. Now let's talk about response rates. This is quite interesting. Recent trends in response rates based on studies provide the most compelling evidence that direct mail is alive and well, and it's still a powerful marketing tool. This chart's based on a report that was published by the Data and Marketing Association. It shows that the average response rates produced by direct mail sent to house lists and prospect lists over the past four years. House in this context generally means existing clients or known prospects, while prospects are typically thought of as cold calls or cold messaging. As the chart shows, through from 2015 to 18, that average response rate for house lists has more than doubled from four to nine percent. And the response rate for prospect lists has increased 400 percent from one percent to five. Certainly not a decline. There's no doubt that proving the relevance of direct mail through better targeting, segmentation, personalization, etc., has been a major reason for the increased response rates. But it also turns out that our brains are wired to like or trust and respond to direct mail and to other types of physical marketing materials. Over the last 10 years or so, several research studies have used neuroscience techniques, we're getting pretty technical here, to evaluate how human brains process and respond to direct mail and other physical media compared to digital communications. And the next two slides that I'm gonna show you will demonstrate some of the important findings from just two of these studies. The first one was a study that was conducted by the neuromarketing firm True Impact Marketing done for Canada Post. There were three major findings in this research. First was that the study found that direct mail is easier to understand and more memorable than digital media. It requires 21% less cognitive effort to process and it and lists a higher brand recall. Secondly, the study shows that direct mail is more persuasive than digital media. Its motivation response is 20% higher. And last, the research found that direct mail is more likely to drive behavior than digital media does. The second study was conducted by Temple University's Center for Neuro Decision Making, done for the US Postal Service. And this research found a number of things. One, study participants processed digital media quicker, but spent more time with physical content, such as direct mail. Then when reviewing the physical content, participants had a stronger emotional response and remembered it better. And physical content leaves a longer lasting impact than digital content does. And finally, physical content triggers activity in the area of the brain 
that is responsible for value and desirability for featured products or services. So let's talk a little bit about how does this appeal to various age groups. It turns out that even young people who are usually viewed as digital addicts who prefer to do everything online have an affinity for direct mail. This table shows that it's based on a research study that was done last year by Quad Graphics. And it shows the percentages of survey respondents who said that they had taken certain actions after receiving a direct mail piece. What this study found was that members of Generation Z, for everybody who's not totally familiar with these terms, Generation Z is normally people up to age 24, uh, and Millennials, 25 to 37, are more likely than Gen Xers and Baby Booners. Gen Xers are 38 to 53, and Baby Booners, Boomers, 54 to 72. But the younger folks, the Generation Z and Millennials, are more likely than Gen Xers and Baby Boomers to visit the website in response to a direct mail piece. Also said that the younger folks, Gen Zers and Millennials, are also more likely than Gen Xers and Baby Boomers to research a product in response to receiving a direct mail piece. And when it comes to purchasing a product in response to receiving a direct mail piece, this research found that the four generational cohorts are fairly even. Millennials are a little more likely to make a purchase than Gen Xers and baby boomers, and Gen Zers slightly less out likely, but you'll notice they're all pretty close in the statistics. Research by the Postal Service has also confirmed that direct mail appeals to young people. In a 2018 study, 62% of millennial responders said that they have recently visited a store based on information received in the mail, compared to 55% of Gen X responders and 52% of baby boomers. Interesting. Let's talk a little bit about direct mail and multi-channel marketing. The data and the research that we've looked at so far shows us that direct mail is still an important and effective marketing channel, even when it's used in fairly traditional ways. But over the last several years, we've learned that integrated multi-channel marketing programs, that is marketing campaigns that use multiple communication channels and techniques in an integrated way, are far more impactful and effective than single channel programs. And we've also learned that integrated multi-channel marketing programs that include a direct mail component produce better results than those that don't include direct mail. For example, a study was done of 575 marketers conducted earlier this year by Demand Metric, and just half, just over half of the survey respondents said that they include direct mail in their multi-channel marketing programs, and 80% of those respondents reported that direct mail improves multi-channel campaign performance. More specifically, this research found that the inclusion of personalized direct mail in an integrated multi-channel marketing program drives significant improvements in both campaign response rates and ROI. So where do we go from here? While the benefits of using direct mail as a component of integrated multi-channel marketing programs has been clear for some time, it was until recently not that easy to accomplish, but that's changed for a couple of reasons. First, as I said earlier, the Postal Service has introduced several tools and services that make it easier to incorporate direct mail into integrated multi-channel marketing programs, and Gary will be talking about some of these tools and services in a minute. Secondly, several companies are now offering what are generally called automated direct mail solutions. PFL and Pebble Post are just two of the companies that are offering these kinds of solutions. We don't have time today to talk about these solutions in detail, but you can look them up. And in general, they enable companies to link certain online activities to the production of a direct mail piece and trigger the production automatically. That's all I've got to say. And with that, I wanna turn the presentation over to Gary. As I said earlier, he is the Vice President of New Products and Innovation with the US Postal Service. He and his team are responsible for a bunch of the stuff that he's going to talk to you today. 
So Gary, why don't you start by telling us a little bit about what you do at USPS and uh, and I will switch to your charts. Absolutely, thank you very much, Sandy. Uh, I'm a 28 year postal veteran. I started in uh, our engineering group uh, at the time we were uh, launching um, automation. I've since uh, worked in our information technology group and helped launch the intelligent mail barcode. And today, for the last 12 years, I've been working in our marketing group. Uh, I launched our shipping services when we had our um, government allowed us to become competitive in the shipping market and uh, change our pricing. And really over the last four or five years, I've really been focusing on, you know, the role of mail in today's world and how mail needs to change given uh, what's going on in digital and the growth in digital to be competitive not for the next five years, but for the next 20 years. And how are we going to go about in to say today's society where everyone's constantly on their phone integrating the, the benefits of digital, but also keeping the extreme benefits associated with hard copy, a lot of which Sandy has just highlighted in his presentation. So with that said, I'd like to just jump right into my presentation. So next, Sandy. So the first is one of the easiest ways to tell of whether or not somebody uh, likes a channel and likes receiving something is how often do they use it? So what I like to start with is really proof that we've gotten back that people still engage with their mail that they receive. Because it's real important, even if we look at things like uh, what people tell us about bills, and 78% of households still say they prefer receiving at least one of their bills by mail. Bills can act as a reminder for the person that's getting it. It can also provide them with additional details. But the reason why bills is so important to direct mail is that people need to be driven to the mailbox. And as long as they find utility in the mailbox, it's gonna help bring all things up. And the point being is 77% of the consumers check their mail still five times a week. So they're going to the mailbox on a daily basis. And some stats not on this that I actually find even more appeal appealing is for first class bills and statements, people are opening them over 90% of the time. And for mail in general, people on average spend five to eight minutes looking through the mail on a daily basis. So when you compare that to a digital, Think about it, what might you receive? Five to six pieces of mail, and people are spending five to eight minutes on it. Compare that to a digital world where you're hidden, being hit with banners that are really on the side of what you're looking at. How much attention do you spend to the thousands of impressions that you get hit within the digital world? When you're going through the mail, think about it. Are you doing anything else usually when you're going through the mail? No, you're spending attention and your focus is on the mail in front of you. You're touching it, you're feeling it, and you're focusing on it. And you're doing it frequently. So if you go to the next uh, slide, one of the proof points that we like to use is some of the survey data that we get back. And this is one of my favorites because what's more important to small businesses than when a new business opens? and you know, one of the things that we got back from consumers is 56% of consumers have tried a new business after receiving a marketing mail piece. It influences the customer. They see it because there's not a bunch of digital clutter around it, and they're able to focus on the offer at hand. So that's not to say that we don't think we have competition uh, from digital. In fact, if you look at the next slide, one of the things that we've looked at is really some trends. And one of the first things I want to point out uh, on the left side is 
some of that, if you look at, that goes all the way out to 2023. And what we've looked at is, what would our trend be if we let digital continue to gain market share at the rate that they've been doing, how it would affect the rest of the market? But the one thing I want to focus people back on is really what, even with that growth, what we've been able to do in the near term. And I point that is if you look at 2012 and you look at the amount of direct mail revenue that we have, and then you compare that to our last full complete year in 2018, you'll see that even with the trend that's going on in digital, those two numbers are about the same. And that's what our goal is. We want to make sure that even with digital continuing to increase its market share and its rapid growth, to show the sustainability of mail so that we don't see uh, that trend go back and that we're able to better see what's happened between 2012 and 18, in which we've seen a stabilization even with rapid growth in digital because of our adaptation to, uh, to what's going on. So I'm going to share with you some of the ways that we're adapting. So if you flip to the next slide, you'll see that we've really changed some of our basic thinking on direct mail. Uh, I think at one point we looked at direct mail as a silo in that how, it, how can it do better than everything else in the space. And one of the things that we've, that we've shifted our focus a little bit is after talking with marketer, with businesses, small businesses, having focus groups, we're actually viewing uh, direct mail and digital as being smarter together. In other words, a mail piece followed with a, an email or a digital follow-up will get an even better response than either one alone. So how do we use an omni-channel campaign to really drive results? And by looking at some new things and innovative solutions, we believe not only is an omni-channel important, but you'll see how with informed delivery, the Postal Service is working on creating its own omni-channel uh, for the end customer. So if you look at the next slide, one of the things that we took a look at is we really went back in e-commerce and just in sales in general. What we tried to look at is how direct mail can influence every part of a customer's journey. So if you think about how you buy something, you know, you really start with just an interest. I'm interested in golf. I'm interested in making my game better. So you have a desire. You want to get better. The consideration stage is one where the advertiser can convince you that even though you really only drive it 212 yards today with this new driver, you can hit 300 yards perfectly straight. So that's the consideration. Now. You get an advertising. Now, a mail piece can also drive you at this point it, a lead. It can basically take you from the mail piece now through a QR code or through informed delivery, and it can take you directly to its site to begin your shopping experience. Once you looked at the at the mail piece and at the at the offers, you may go away. Well, with retargeting, what it can do is you can now retarget the customer and maybe give them an additional offer that helps you lead to the sale. And then we all know, anyone who's a marketer knows, and Sandy talked about it, who are the best customers? The best customers are the ones that were previous customers. These are the ones that are more likely to purchase. So repeat sales, go back to people once you know their interest and offer something new again. So we've really tried to chart and look at the journey of the customer and integrate where mail works the best in that. 
So if you look at the next slide, we've got four things that we're going to talk to you about uh, in, the next, uh, in the next few minutes. The first is we're really going to talk to you about informed delivery and how it gives the postal, the postal service really a digital makeup and how it allows people, both digital natives and people that still like to receive the hard copy, a choice on how to receive their mail. Then we're going to talk about retargeting and some trends that we see in there, how informed visibility can help you target for an omni-channel campaign, and then finally, how mail pieces are being more effective by using some digital enhancements. So if you go to the next slide, Sandy, you'll see that one of the major things that we've offered is our informed delivery product. And today we're proud to say that we have over 20 million users in the United States uh, for informed delivery. Over 15 million of them receive a mail piece every single day. And if you look at the, uh, at the other column, that mail piece is being opened 60% of the time. And those of you that are familiar with email open rates, email open rates uh, for, marketing, uh, for marketing digital mail would uh, run around 18% in the e-commerce category. So you compare that to 60%. And the other thing that we know is that if you look at who's opening informed delivery at least five times a week, that 59% number spikes all the way up to 75%. So 75% of our users open it at least five times a week. So the great part about now having 20 million users that are opening the mail on a daily basis is we have a platform. And I like to give a little story on why this, this is uh, so effective. I used golf as the example earlier, and I'm going to use it again here uh, for this. Back about uh, two or three years ago, I've been receiving informed delivery for quite a while, as you may have guessed. Uh, but one of the things is I got a mail piece in my mail, and it was for a new tailor-made driver. And I was at the time convinced that I could drive it 300 yards with this tailor-made driver. So what? So I actually went online and I made a purchase of the uh, of the driver. Now I'd like to point out I still had not received that mail piece. Because I was at I I was on my phone when I saw it, and I immediately went to that site, used the coupon code that was on the mail piece because I can see the mail piece, and made the purchase. Now, where this really comes in, and what really drives it home for me, is it was all about getting another impression, because my wife is actually the one who usually uh, gets the mail. And I'd like to point out that that day when I got home, my wife hadn't set that mail piece aside for me that was telling me about the new drivers and the 25% off that I could have got from it. So if I didn't have informed delivery, then I would have actually never made that purchase. That's just a real life example of how having more people in the household, having access and seeing the mail piece, and getting more impressions is driving up the, uh, the success rate of informed delivery. And today, we've had close to 5,000 different brands that have now come on informed delivery and done a campaign. And what we mean by a campaign is you can see in the center picture, you'll see a color image of the mail piece. And you'll see on the bottom left-hand side a little ride-along. That ride-along is tappable. So if you tap on that and click it, you immediately go to their site to go shopping. So we've had 5,000 different brands do that and close to 30,000 campaigns submitted 
into our form delivery. And the great news, Sandy, is if you click on, click if you go to the next slide, I'll show you some important. Gary, before you do that, we've got a question that's relevant to the informed delivery, and I think it might be uh, helpful. And what it really, what the question is, is does informed delivery let marketers import their lists? Meaning, can a company upload their prospect list and match it to those who are using informed delivery? Because of privacy reasons, we can't do that. However, what we are allowed to do is. Uh, and I have something on it in a couple slides, but what you are allowed to do is you can upload your list and we will tell you how many of those uh, on your list are informed delivery customers. Ah. We also give you data on how many of those, how many of those customers that were informed delivery. We'll tell you how many of them actually open their e the emails that you sent to them. We'll tell you how many actually pressed on your click through and went to your website from our site as well. But we do have to do it in the aggregate uh, because of PII reasons and being the federal government, we can't give out, we can't give out uh, individual statistics, but we can in aggregate. So we give you a lot of data to help you get that information, but we can't give you down to the individual name. That certainly would be helpful. Yes, I agree. Uh, and I've worked with my legal team and uh, some outside lawyers on uh, to push this as far as we think we can. So um, what we show here is what we want to show is of all eligible households in the United States, we now have close to 13% of them signed up. So when you think about that, 13% of all households in America are signed up at this point point for informed delivery and in certain areas of the country we just added a new color because we have certain areas of the country where we now have over 20 percent of the people of the households in those areas that have now signed up for informed delivery and the reason that's so important is informed delivery is in almost every case leading to a increased response rate in your direct mailing it's giving you additional impressions it's giving an ease of use to be able to click through and act now on your offer and it's just creating an easier way to uh, oh, easier way to make that purchase that you're trying to drive your customer to do so if you flip to the next slide, you'll see some of the things that I just talked about as a result of the question. As, as I said before, uh, we actually give you statistics before you do the campaign and after you do the campaign. So before the campaign, we're going to tell you from your mailing list exactly what percentage of the customers that you're sending it to have informed delivery and then afterwards we're going to tell you how many opened it and we're going to tell you how many people clicked on it so that you can know how informed delivery benefited now i will say once they click on it and they go to your website as you probably know it's very easy at that point to measure your conversion rate to see how many actually converted into a sale so if you look at the next slide, you'll see one of the things that we want to tell you is, is the thing that isn't on there. And that's how do customer how are customers converting once they click from informed delivery and go to the customer's website. Well, what we did was we cre we created a pyramid of activity on this. So the first thing that you that we look at is this we do a survey to every to a large sample of postal customers on a regular basis so the first thing that we ask them is have you seen a interactive ad in the past six months in other words an informed delivery campaign right now 42 percent of the people we ask have said yes i've seen that now 
72 percent of the of those customers have actually clicked on that ad and gone to the company's website and of that 68 percent say that they have purchased from the website that they've accessed so then you look over there and you break it down even even farther so you start with the 68 percent that have purchased but there are two other factors that we ask the question. So, okay, 68 have purchased. What percent went to that website? Because some people don't purchase the first time they're there, but they still planned to purchase from that website as a result of clicking through it. 24%, they say they may not have purchased, but they plan on purchasing as a result of getting the information or seeing the sale that's on the website, but didn't purchase at the time. So that's the repeat. Only 10% of the customers that had clicked through told us that they didn't plan to purchase from the website. That's a pretty great conversion. And keep in mind, informed delivery is a free service uh, for both the mailer and for the consumer receiving it. So this is what the Postal Service is using in form delivery is to give us the digital footprint and to drive the ROI. You know, Sandy talked about how the response rate on, on direct mail is going up. We feel that informed delivery is now part of your direct mail campaign. And this is how we're looking at turning, when you do a direct mail piece, automatically converting that from an individual piece that just hits a person to its own omni-channel campaign only through the postal service and at the rate that you're paying for in postage so next we're looking at other things as well what we what i talk to people a lot about is how we're trying to see the Postal Service different and how we're trying to adapt to a changing world. This is something that we're actually just piloting on it, so it's important I say we are just piloting in the Merrifield area, so a small area, but we've asked ourselves in today's day and age, what is an address? If you pick up your, uh, your mobile phone and you look at the contacts, how many physical addresses do you have of your friends? But a lot of times you may have their, their cell phone number or you might have an email address. Is there a way that the Postal Service in the future could still deliver it? And when thinking through that, one of the main things we keep coming back to is mail today is mostly, sat, is mostly sorted through computers. So by simply putting a license plate on the mail piece instead of an address, we can associate that to the address. So as long as we know the customer's email address and the address, we could essentially give the customer a license plate because we never want to give out. If somebody says, what's Gary Reblin at Hotmail.com's uh, you know, address, I can't give you that. However, I can say, hey, you know what? I know where Gary Reblin at Hotmail.com is. I can enable delivery of that mail piece, put this license plate on the mail piece, and I can do that. So that's what we're exploring, and it's important to say this. We're testing and exploring what we can do with a physical address. We're not there, but we like to paint a picture of what we're thinking about and how we want to evolve mail and uh, and how where we can take it into the future so if you look at the next slide this is really the pilot that we're running in the Mer merrifield area because we have informed delivery what we're allowing customers to do now in, in a small area of the country is tell us if you're interested in receiving more about anything you can select beauty banking uh coupons anything like that that you don't think that you receive enough or would like to receive more of. And immediately, once you check this, we look in our informed delivery campaigns and we say, do we have any matches there? In other words, 
I said that I was looking for food coupons. Do we have any food coupons that went to the zip code that I'm living in? So I'm in 22044. Do we have any, uh, any food coupons that perhaps this person hasn't received? Now, it's important to, for us to note at this point in time, the mailer has to tell us that it's okay to do this. If the mailer doesn't say yes, then we assume they're not, their answer is no, but we ask mailers that are mailing in the zip code where this program is going on, can we do it? Assuming they said yes, we then show them the informed delivery. And why wouldn't the mailer want to do this? Because we're just trying to get them more people into their restaurant, more people buying their product, more people making donations, just new ways to do that. Once again, also a free service. What we also do here, and this is where informed duress gets in, get in there, we ask the consumer if they'd like to receive more of these pieces through the mail. If they answer yes, we don't tell the marketer where the person lives. Instead, we give them a code to put on the mail piece. Because we gave them the code, we know where the address that that's associated with. So through the computers that sort the mail, we're able to still sort it to the correct address without ever letting the marketer know where we're putting that mail piece. That way, if the consumer at any point says, hey, I no longer want to receive these pieces, we're able to shut it off right away because we're the one who provides those codes. So if you go to the next slide. Another thing that we're doing is we're working out on how we can, uh, in the digital world, use mail to retarget the cu customer. One of the biggest things here is we all have done it. We all put an item in the shopping cart and then we abandon the shopping cart. A behavior that, that uh, marketers have found is a lot of times if you go back with, to that customer with an offer, for example, 10% off or 25% off, they'll tend to come back onto the website and make that purchase. And one of the best avenues to get the person's attention is through direct mail. Uh, so we've been uh, driving people to retarget customers using direct mail. If you look at the next slide, the next thing that we were highlighting is the use of informed delivery. You turn, one of the early slides I told you about is how we're really changing our thinking of how we drive omni-channel campaigns. Well, one of the big things is if you're going to use mail and back it up with digital, is the timeliness of the digital offer. So you want to hit the consumer with the digital offer after they have the mail piece in hand and at the most optimal time. Informed visibility now is able to tell the mailer exactly to the minute when a mail piece has, been, has arrived. And the great part about it is we allow the mailer to ask for that information on whatever levels they want. So, for example, if you'd like to know every 15 minutes, uh, get an update on what customers have received your mail piece, through informed visibility, you can do that. And we've also, we got an available uh, via mobile API toolkit as well. So if you're on the go, you can actually get this information right down to your phone to know that, hey, I've, I've now got another 100 people that have received their mail piece and actually build it into APIs that would trigger emails based on the delivery of mail. Next. These are just a few of the characteristics that informed visibility uh, gives you. First, it's easy to share and receive data from the Postal Service. We'll give you as much data and, as we said, as, flexibility, as, as flexible as you want it. You pick the time. You pick how often you want to receive it. You pick the device you want to receive it. And you now get end-to-end -end visibility. As people know, we've, we're, you know, in the old world, uh, we were able to tell 
people only up to when we sorted it last, and then they had to assume when it might get delivered. In the new world with informed visibility, we're able to track the mail piece to a mailbox to let you know almost real time when that is received, and that's real important for an omnichannel campaign. So if you look at the next slide, you can see the other thing that we've looked, we run promotions, we run a lot of things on how to keep mail pieces interested and how to digitally enhance your, your, your mail piece. Obviously, I talked on informed delivery, how you can click on the image of the mail piece and go directly to the mail, mail site. But one of the things that we've also looked at is how you can use tactile to catch the person's attention and then use things like QR codes to drive the customer to the website directly from the mail piece itself. So we're really thinking and working on the whole journey of the mail piece. And every single point in the journey, we're trying to look at best practices of to get the mail piece noticed and to make sure that the person can act on that mail piece as expeditiously and in as many ways with as many impressions as possible to get you a better bang for the buck for direct mail and to continue to drive the ROI up of direct mailers. Because the one constant about advertising is people want to advertise in forums that get results. I don't want to advertise what's the new glitzy way to advertise if it doesn't drive people to my store. Postal Service is solely focused on how to drive up the ROI of your mailings and of direct mail. And everything that I reviewed today and every innovation that we're doing is all about how we can incorporate digital into a direct mail product to drive the end result. So thank you, that's what I have for you today. Thanks so much, Gary. Uh, is there, before we sign off, is there any questions that anybody's got that we would should answer before we get off? Uh, I'll give it a, a minute, um, you know, before we uh, before we sign off to take a look at the question. In in the meantime, you know, first I want to say, you know, again, thanks so much, Gary, for your participation. Uh, it's terrific to learn that our postal service is doing as much as you've clearly shown us and more. Uh, to help the process from both a marketer and a consumer standpoint. I think that's terrific. And I look forward to learning about more innovations that come from you guys. Um, I also wanted to mention that uh -huh. if you have any other questions uh, about what we talked about today, either in Gary's presentation or mine, okay, um, that you can uh, get a hold of me at the, uh, the number or the uh, email that's on the screen. I'd also be obviously happy to talk to anybody about RSN and what we might be able to do for you as well. Um, that is, but let me ask one question of Gary while we still have you on the phone and have a few minutes. Um, is there you know, any particular campaign that you see as having really stood out from a performance standpoint? Not what um, the has done, but what what companies have done with the capability you described? Well, I like to point out two examples. So we've actually had tremendous luck with charities. One of the things I'm not allowed to do is give specific examples unless the company has said that I'm allowed to, but I can uh, talk about industries and things like that. Sure. Uh, one of the really neat things that I've seen and uh, that I'm passionate about is We've actually worked with several charities and uh, the results that they get through informed delivery have really been mar uh, incredible in driving donations, in driving adoptions of animals and other things like that because the ease from seeing the mail piece to being able to click and donate and all these are mobile optimized and they make the donations extremely easy it's been really, uh, really great to see how much donations have gone up 
as a result of including informed delivery campaigns. That's the other true. area, and I, the only reason I want to do this is we've, we've had tons of examples of great e-commerce campaigns. And one of the things I, I, uh, I do like to point out is this is marketing now uh, that we see some people do not so well and some people do well. The example I use here is one that I do can use a name. We actually partnered with the Pittsburgh uh, Pirates uh, on a game that they wanted to try and sell out. It was a Saturday game. And they actually agreed to do some A-B testing with us uh, for, for, the, for the sale. And basically what they were doing is they were offering, uh, they, they were sending out a direct mail piece to get people uh, to, to, uh, to come to the game and purchase a ticket. So what they did was in informed delivery, they, di they came up with three different ride-along campaigns. That's just a little box on the left-hand side. In every case, the direct mail piece was the exact same direct mail piece. On, in the ride-along content, on the first case, basically all they did was put the Pittsburgh uh, Pirates logo. You know, in that case, what they see is not as many people actually uh, click on that because you're not giving them a reason to do it. By simply adding a call to action, which is simply in, the, in that same box saying buy now you're, uh, and get 10% off, just repeating the offer on that, uh, we actually saw an increase in sales. Then the next thing that we did was we actually, they began, they offered a free Roberto Clemente uh, jersey for, uh, for certain informed delivery customers by just putting in a coupon code. What they had was they, they saw another increase in 10% of sales just by adding that into their informed delivery campaign. So the, the thing that I like to drive home is informed delivery in itself will drive results and because people will click through. The better the offer you give them and the better the reason you give them to click, the more likely they are to click and the better it drives results and sales directly from your informed delivery campaign. That's a great example, Gary. I really appreciate it. One more time, I want to thank everybody for their participation and especially you, Gary, for your help with getting this off the ground. And as we have more information in the future, maybe we can do it again. Again, thank you thanks. very much. Take care, everybody.